Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Develop Code Hunt. It's been quite a while since I recorded the last episode where I went through the Sector 4 conditionals. And since uh, the next release date is tomorrow, I'm going to start today with Sector 5, the second conditional sector. And yeah, let's see how far I can get. There's five levels to go and we'll jump right into the first one. Okay, so we have a puzzle to solve. There's a string as input and we return something that's an, another string that's marked here as a super long string. So apparently we're supposed to return uh, some kind of a, a category depending on the length of the string of a string. So for an empty string it's short for one or two characters is still short, for four it's already average, for seven, no, for eight it's long, and for 15 it's actually super long. So let's see if s.length is smaller than let's say four return short if s dot length is smaller than uh, let's say eight return average if s dot length is smaller than maybe fifteen return long and in the other case return super long. That fulfills all the test cases but he's not finished yet so I'm not entirely sure. Oh it actually captures the solution and it is even an elegant solution so let's continue. Second task of loop sector. Fancy years are years that have all the same numbers. Fancy years are never less than 1000 and never bigger than 9999. Okay, so we're supposed to return either fancy year uh, or not a fancy year depending on whether all the numbers of the of the uh, of the year are the same. How to check that best? I could just compare the characters and say uh, I could just convert the integer to string and compare all the characters. Maybe, maybe not. I don't currently see any the easy way, so let's uh, go with that one for now. Um, let's all same. We assume it's true. Uh, for I'm actually not sure. I think I can't loop over a string in Java, so I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, I dot two string dot length and I++. Plus plus. Actually I should um, I should store that in a variable because I'm going to need it uh, at least a second time. A string and then we say actually we're going to start at one We're going to start at one and say if well let's do it easier all same and equals i s string dot char at i equals i s string dot char at i minus one. 
So I'm always comparing the current character to the last one and uh, if they are not the same then not all the numbers are the same so I'm putting this to false and then depending on the uh, re re on the on the state of the all same thing and the actual size so if nine nine no if one thousand is smaller i and i is smaller or is smaller than ten thousand let's do it like that and all same then return fancy year uh, otherwise return not a fancy year so let's see that's probably not the most beautiful solution I can think of but hopefully it's a solution that works ah okay I reused I that was stupid so let's call this one actually J and see if it works now now it should, if I did not forget anything, it should at least compile. Looks good, but of course it's not one of the most uh, elegant solutions as a skill rating shows. And I'm actually not quite sure how to improve this. This would be quite easy in C Sharp because we could just, or in Java 8, because we could just take the distinct uh, characters in the enumeration of characters a string is and then count them but actually I don't know which version of Java this compiles to so let's just try something out if I convert this to a string say distinct because this function uh, method exists in Java 8 as far as I know and then say count does this actually work? Or does this compile? Oh no, there's no distinct method. Okay, so this apparently is not Java 8. So I have to resolve to something else. Let's see what I can do. I could say that I I convert the string actually to a set of characters so if I say okay I have a set here this is java util set of character um, let's call it s and this is java util hash set of character character right yes and say i to string to char array which might work and then i say it's a set so the characters should not appear more than once and so the set size should be one this is way shorter but it does not compile because I don't have Java util set around I thought the interface had that name but maybe uh, unknown type hash sets so how am I supposed to use sets here um, maybe Maybe I just have to do an import and say java util hash set up here because it doesn't support this inline thing. But maybe no, no, the import is not is not resolved. So apparently I cannot import java util hash set which is 
kind of not nice because it means maybe it's imported by default no so I cannot I cannot really use set here okay how else could I resolve this so honestly I don't have an idea how I can solve this task in Java with with less code if I'm not able to use a set implementation um, then I'm probably not going to get so far if you have any ideas about that uh, feel free to drop a comment I would be really interested in how to solve this in Java but actually I think I'm going to fall back to my initial implementation for now uh, and just accept that I don't get the full skill points here because I have no idea how to do that with less code in Java below Java 8 and without a set so uh, yeah as I said if you have an idea uh, just drop me a comment I would be really interested in uh, what you think about that I know that this task is quite easy to solve in C Sharp or Java 8 but apparently this doesn't work here so um, this is actually the first task I give up without the full skill points sorry for that maybe I'll come back later if I have an idea how to solve it better for now uh, let's continue with uh, the third task of the second loop sector which receives three int values as an input and is supposed to return one boolean output so for three ones it returns false for 42 58 and 40 it returns true interesting i can't really see much from that but how about checking a equals 24 and b equals 58 and c equals 40 which should fulfill the two test cases I actually have but there's another test case that returns true which is uh, the test case a equals 3 and b equals 4 and c equals 5 probably that's not it yet but I don't currently see the pattern so uh, I'm trying to get some more input uh, to actually solve this task so 24 actually seems to help um, and we have 70 here and we have 6 uh, 56 in the back seats let's see me some more input I don't see the pattern yet so actually if a is 24 this seems to be true so B 40 and C 58 maybe it's supposed to be a certain size maybe it's also let's assume it's always if um, a is 42 and also in these other cases maybe I don't know if that's the right way to do it but we'll find out it's probably just a, the sum of it needs to be bigger than so or maybe not so there's a 24 where I'm supposed to return false so let's just undo this and this is the 58 58 40 uh, let's just recompile that so we have the 42 40 58 40, 58, where it's also returning, tr supposed to return true. I don't see the pattern yet. Maybe I'm stupid, then please tell me uh, in the comments. But if not, 3, 5, 4. 
So this is again the same numbers only uh, shifted around. But I'm not sure if this is any is going to help me in any way. B equals five and C equals four. So I'm to also going to resolve this situation. So we have more test cases here saying A equals 72 and B equals 97 and C equals 65. Let's see what happens. A lot of test cases we got right but still there's an yet another test case we got wrong with this interpretation so I'm not sure yet how to interpret this pattern but there's got to be something so let me take a look at that what makes me curious is that I have the flipped numbers here which so Actually, 3 squared plus 4 squared is 9 plus 16 is 25 is 5 squared. So this might be the side length of a right, racket, a right triangle, sorry. So the question is how to put this in. a uh, short concise boolean expression so the smaller one squared should equal the biggest one squared but apparently they can be flipped around so it would be a times a plus b times b minus c times c equals zero and then I have three conditions of that kind just oops sorry just to quickly check whether my assumption uh, my general assumption is right so we should be able to place the minus here and to place the minus actually in front of one of those a's and this should be it if I didn't mess up the syntax I'm not sure if I have to set praises there but if I'm right this solves my task so now the only question is how to uh, write this in a more concise way let me think about it for a sec so the first way to improve this is of course to replace the minus with an equal sign. So we have an equals here and an equals here and then actually we have to uh, flip this around a bit and say okay this equals b times b so this should be the same but it's not much shorter so it's probably not giving me the full skill rating either so there's got to be another shorter way to express this so one idea i have is to say okay i need the the biggest of the numbers um to be alone on the side of this equation so i say int um max equals math max a comma math max uh, b comma c so this should be the biggest one and then i have a uh, side one which is math dot min from a and 
b and inside 2 which is math min from a and c I'm not even sure that works um, but let me just try it out whether side 1 times side 1 plus side 2 times side 2 equals max times max I think there are cases where this doesn't work and it's not even much prettier so yes there are cases where this doesn't work and for sure not prettier so uh, maybe I should could just go back to my previous solution hmm again I have no idea how to do this but in this case I don't even have an idea how to do this in C sharp in a much shorter way so I think I'm going to stay with this solution for now because this episode is already quite long and maybe I come up with a better solution overnight and will show you. So yes, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to subscribe to my channel or drop me comments if you uh, have any remarks about what I did. Uh, also have a look at my other uh, series about uh, development tools and about uh, how to develop uh, so development style and yeah I hope to see you in the next episode of Let's Develop Code Hunt. Stay tuned!